All right, get up here. Andy. <laughs> it was summer of 2021, over a year into COVID, and I was battling some deep depression, which was exacerbated by being stuck home alone in the middle of the woods in Gastonia. <laughs> so things were pretty bad, and whenever I get really upset like this, I tend to make life-altering decisions. So I decided that I was going to sell my four-bedroom house on two acres of land, and I was going to move into a much smaller van. <laughs> it took some getting used to, but it was definitely the right move for me mentally. And I even started a new relationship with a woman who was way out of my league. And she didn't seem to mind that I lived in a van, which is apparently a deal breaker for many women in Charlotte. <laughs> Van life was great, but early into 2022, that relationship had faded and things started getting bad again. I wasn't really feeling sad anymore. I was just kind of feeling nothing. And I lost the motivation to do all the things that I once enjoyed. And summer was on its way. Now, I don't hate summer or anything, but there's just not a lot you can do to keep a van cool on 105 degree days. So the depression was getting pretty bad and it was time for a big change again. So I decided that I was going to leave my very good paying corporate job and I was going to work for myself. Considering that I lost all motivation to do just about anything at this point, it wasn't exactly a great time to be starting a company. <laughs> but I was upset and I had to do something life altering. So back to van life. After about two weeks of hot, miserable, 85-degree nights in the van, my luck abruptly changed. And it was in the form of my brother, Corey, signing a lease in Uptown Charlotte. It was just a one-bedroom apartment, but there's a catch. Corey doesn't even live in Charlotte. <laughs> he just rented this apartment so he'd have a place to stay when he comes to visit, like once a month. So. Aware of my situation, he offered me the keys and he told me that I could stay there whenever he wasn't visiting. So obviously I accepted this. And after, after about a year of van life, eating takeout, and trips to Planet Fitness for showers, I had a kitchen again. A washing machine, a bathroom. <laughs> and across the hall there was a coffee machine where I could just walk in and make a vanilla latte whenever I wanted. <laughs> And at the little desk in the corner, I began building my business. A few weeks later, Corey did come to visit, and that Friday night we had planned to go out. So I arrived at the apartment a little bit earlier in the day. He wasn't home yet, but no big deal. I just kind of hung out. I left the door unlocked because I was expecting him and another friend to arrive. And while I was sitting there watching the Knights baseball game from the apartment's balcony, <laughs> I was feeling so at peace. But then, a woman walks in the door. I had never met this person before, but that did not stop her from instantly unloading on me all of her problems. <laughs> I'm telling you, within five minutes, I was up to speed with her therapist. <laughs> it was apparent that she knew Corey, so I didn't think much of it, and this really wasn't something unexpected when it comes to my brother. <laughs> So she starts telling me about all of her failed relationships, how she, didn't, how she just lost her apartment, and all of her business ideas that weren't coming to fruition. It was so much information that I couldn't keep up. But I just sat there and listened while texting my brother, hey, you, you gonna be back soon? <laughs> Through the conversation, I find out that her name is Lindsay. And at some point, she had dated my brother. And she told me all about that too. Things I didn't really care to hear about, my brother. <laughs> but Lindsay poured us some drinks, and I sat there and listened. After about an hour of this, Corey walks in the door, and he tells us about a date he had just been on. And for the first time, Lindsay was silent. 
She didn't say anything about what Corey had just shared, but I did notice that she stopped pouring herself drinks and began pulling straight from the bottle. So a little later, it was time for us to go out, and the first stop of the night was the Roxbury to meet up with some friends. Lindsay was with us on the walk there, but as soon as we got inside, she disappeared, and I was honestly pretty relieved. <laughs> so Corey got us in for free. The friends we met up with bought drinks, and I danced with a girl, something that I hadn't done in years. And I was on top of the world. The night led us to a few other places, and we had an amazing time. Such an amazing time that at 2.45 in the morning, I decided I was going to call my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I know. So I've seen this scenario play out multiple times before. Basically, we have a blissful conversation that lasts well into the early morning, just like the old days. The difference now is that these drunk conversations are followed by sober conversations the next day where we discuss how it's not going to work. And this time was no exception. And it left me feeling worse than ever before. And I started to think to myself, what other life-altering decisions did I have left to make at this point? <laughs> but later in the day, I get a phone call, and it was from a number I didn't recognize. But I do need to try to take this whole small business owner thing seriously. So I decide I'm going to answer, and it's Lindsay. I had almost forgotten about her at this point, but here she was calling me, and guess what? She had a lot more new information to share with me about how terrible her life was going. <laughs> Turns out she did not have as good of a night as the rest of us. She blacked out at the first club, lost her phone, spent the night in a random person's apartment, and apparently spent all morning tracking down her phone. This is paraphrased, of course. But I sat there and I listened and I mustered up a few words of encouragement before ending the conversation about an hour later. <laughs> the next day, I wake up and it was a Sunday and I called my father to wish him a happy Father's Day to find out that he was gonna be spending the day alone and this really bummed me out. But I tried to stay positive and I told him about a film screening that I had later in the day. Normally, when I get to scream one of my films to a large audience, it's, it's one of my favorite things ever. And this time really should have been no exception. But after my film played, they invited me up in front of the audience for a Q&A. And normally they ask about the film, but this time they asked about me and my career. And I really just wasn't ready or prepared to answer those questions, so I just stood up there trying to hold in my sadness while robotically answering the audience's questions. When I was on my way home that night, I get a phone call and it was from a number that had never called me before. But, small business owner, I decide I'm going to answer. And I pick up, and it's Lindsay. <laughs> Again. As expected, more and more drama unloaded on me. This time, she wanted to talk about how she didn't have any money Nobody was willing to help her, and even though she had found her phone, she couldn't afford to pay the bill. So the new number she was calling me from was with a new carrier because she couldn't afford to pay the old carrier to keep her old number, which is apparently the workaround if you can't pay your bill. <laughs> this conversation lasted about 40 minutes, and it, it drained every bit of what I had left for the day. The next day I wake up, and I actually got back to some of my routine. I got my free vanilla latte from the lounge, watched some TV, did some work on the computer, and things were going all right. It was Monday, so I had planned that night to go to the Storyteller's Workshop. <laughs> so, so I made myself an early dinner, and I began getting ready. And as I'm getting ready, I get a phone call, and I, I look at my phone, and this time, right there on the caller ID, it was Lindsay. So reluctantly, I answer, and Lindsay kept it surprisingly short, and she asked if she could stop by. I said sure, because I knew that I was leaving soon, and if I needed an excuse to cut her off, I had one. So Lindsay walks in the door, and I was like, well, here we go. But Lindsay looked different. She had chopped her hair shorter, and she wasn't wearing makeup and she didn't start telling me about any of her petty problems. 
Instead, she told me that she's been struggling with drug addiction. She didn't really share a lot of details, but she told me it was her time to do something about it. She was on her way to Florida to check herself into rehab, but she wanted to stop by first and give me a hug and thank me for listening to her throughout the weekend because nobody else would. That one gets me. <laughs> uh, I want to just give a shout out to all the storytellers. A lot of them have, this is their first showcase, and in Andy's uh, situation, he's never even been to a showcase, and he came up on stage to tell a story. So, <laughs> so he's nice, but he's crazy. So just, just throw that out there. <laughs>